Hello everybody and welcome to this session on neurodiversity. <clears throat> I am Dr. Gauri Chintalapalli. I am a family physician and I have specialized in child development. And I work in Aster CMI in Bangalore. So now over to Ms. Sushma. Hi everyone. My name is Sushma Gopalan. I work as a child life specialist in Aster CMI. I am familiar with being a clinical psychologist and a counseling psychologist. Over to Ms. Apurva. Hi everyone, I am Apoorva. I am part of the child development team here at Aster CMI Hospital. I work as a psychologist. Can we start off with the session? Yes, thank you so much. So we are nowadays hearing a lot about the term neurodiversity. And it's a very commonly used term. We hear it in a figure of speech, we watch it in TV, we see it in, re we read it in papers, so many. But what exactly is neurodiversity and why are we taking it as something which is different? So I would like Dr. Gauri to answer the basic topic as to what do we mean by neurodiversity. So to understand this, let's go back to our history from the time of evolution. If you go to a prehistoric, historic, there is so much we have evolved uh, from that time and we are still yes. evolving. So that is why these terms you're, you, you're hearing it now more often. So with times we have evolved, with evolution we have made changes around us, we are adapting. So we have to adapt for our survival. And with this comes this new changes. So if you even look into two or three decades back into now, there was no computers, there was no gadgets and we knew work was work when we come home we didn't have gadgets we weren't yes. working or we weren't hooked on to the social media and everything yes. now times have changed so now we need to see what all this is doing to us how it is changing us so from then to now the family dynamics has changed from joint families we are becoming nuclear families so the burden of how much we have to manage is increasing. With that comes the type of lifestyle we are leading. Now moving on to the word neurotypical. So neuro means anything related to the brain and nerves. Typical you all know. It is like how it is normally uh, what we find naturally around. So neurotypical means what we have in our mindset as what is normal or within the normal range. So everybody is different. So we cannot say this person is neurotypical, this person is not just by comparing two individuals. So it is about the normalcy among most of the people. So that is neurotypical. So if there is typical, there is divergent. So there is a term called neurodivergent. Divergent means away from typical. Being neurodivergent or not being typical doesn't mean there is a problem. When we are seeing more and more people now with these uh, labeling as neurodivergent or having these conditions, it doesn't mean uh, they are abnormal. That is why this thing of neurodivergence has come into picture. It basically means we are all different. The way we look at each thing is different. Like if you are standing at different sides of the number 6, one perceives it as 6, the other perceives it at 9. So the way the brain is functioning, analyzing things uh, and uh, reacting may be different for the same situation. And okay. how do we put this together and work around with each other to make it normal is what is all about neurodivergence. Okay, to, so to sum it up, it is basically saying there is no one right way. Right? Yes. So all of us are different and it is how we take each other. And it is just becoming aware of each other's uh, plus and minus. That's it. So we understood what is neurodiversity. But I would like to understand from where it all started. Getting to the root is very important. So what is the root of neurodiversity? The term neurodiversity was coined by Judy Singer. It started off as a term that encompasses different cognitive functions. Each of our brain, like fingerprints, are not alike. We are all developing differently and therefore we have different cognitive functions. 
The term neurodiversity is now used broadly to include many conditions such as autism spectrum disorder and others. The term now is also being used uh, in organizations and workplaces where neurodiverse individuals are being hired. So now moving on, what are the conditions that fall under neurodiversity? There are six conditions that come under this category. Okay. So they are autism spectrum disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, Tourette syndrome, dyslexia, dyscalculia and dysgraphia. So when we say about all these conditions, what are the traits that we generally observe for all these conditions? One thing that you need to remember for such conditions is their intelligence level is actually good. Okay. So their brain functioning is fine. It is just one part of uh, the functioning is where it is affected. Okay. Like in autism spectrum, it is more of the social connectedness. Mm -hmm. They may not understand when we are talking to each other what it really means. They may look at it as black or white. Similarly, with attention deficit disorder, they cannot focus or concentrate for long time. They may need uh, repeated prompts. They may get too deep into one particular uh, subject and be there and lose focus on the other necessary things. When we come to dyslexia or dyscalculia or dysgraphia, it is specific uh, difficulty. Maybe they will not be able to read like how we read. It is like a jumbled up words or when they are writing, it may be similar. And with dyscalculia, it is about mathematical numbers. Areas around this in daily life also, you see them struggling. But these can be supported and we can work together with these uh, conditions. Okay. So we understand okay. this, we can help them. So thank you, Dr. Gauri. That was pretty informative. So now we have seen an overview of uh, what uh, comprises neurodiversity. Now moving on to what are the challenges these uh, people face. So Ms. Sushma, do you want to say? Yes. So we have spoken about different conditions and now we are going to just break down the conditions and the issues or what they might face. For example, a person with dyspraxia, they might have difficulty with planning, okay, movement or anything which might require a little bit more of the time investment. This calculia, it's basically to do with math. So any number concept, any calculation, they'll have a problem. Dyslexia, it's basically to do with words. So there'll be problems associated with reading and writing. ASD, it's a huge spectrum. So anything to do with social and communication, they will have an issue. Tourette syndrome, it's any kind of physical or uh, verbal tics that they might face. So all these, when it encompasses different individuals might show different levels of difficulty ADHD so they can be either hyper or they'll be too focused again the conditions are varied so it depends from person to person how do you think they can cope with these challenges okay so it depends when it is identified. If it is early, probably the family can help with time management, being more uh, routine oriented, schedule oriented, uh, increased amount of creativity, initiating different kind of tasks, being more resilient, teaching a child to be resilient. When they become an adult, again, the external atmosphere can be changed so that a little bit of positivity can come into the person, how the atmosphere treats that person, coming up with different plans, seeing to it that whatever shortcoming the person feels he or she might have, the person might not have actually, but can feel they might have, how to help them with that can also help an individual. So you're saying you can actually plan things ahead. Yes. Have some schedules exactly. or uh, sticky notes or yes. if they're gadget friendly, they can yes. have to-do list. Yes. There's so many things out there. Basically, if you, if yes. they understand, they yes. can work around yes. their difficulties. Exactly. It is just a point of being empathetic, being a problem solver and being logical at the same time. talking so much about how they are different, what are their challenges, but we are saying let us include them, inclusivity. 
Do you want to elaborate on how we can utilize their strengths to work better? Yeah. Um, so the conditions that we spoke about earlier, a lot of them bring in a lot on the table uh, in the workforce. So if there is a person who is on the autism spectrum disorder, they will have certain passions, certain interests that they are really passionate about. A person who is ADHD or attention deficit hyperactive disorder are naturally very creative people. They can naturally multitask and they can naturally be very, very innovative. Uh, a person who is dyslexic, uh, having difficulty reading and writing, but are very good thinkers in 3D. They can almost imagine their products already being prepared in 3D. And somebody who's having difficulty uh, coordinating their body movements or their physicality, they are very, very good at uh, being good friends, right? So they're very sympathetic, they're very empathetic, they're very, very creative people. Uh, in popular fiction, we have a lot of examples. We have a lot of movies such as Tari Zameen Par, we have uh, my, my Name is Khan. Um, we have a lot of movies that have these neurodiverse individuals which came up with so many strengths. So you're trying to say that even though they had strengths, they, they, they had challenges, they had strengths and it doesn't mean that they are abnormal or we have yes. to discard them away. We can, yes. when we work together, we can use each person's strength. All of us are different. All of us have some traits of all these things. So yeah. we can put them together and bring out the best in each other. Yeah. And you know, in movies, when all this happens, we clap hands, we are so happy that they're included. We go watch it again, we spread it around. But when it happens in real life, why don't we do it? So that's why the movies are made, so that there's something that we carry away. And I think even Forrest Gump is one of those movies which encompasses yeah. this. Yeah. So when we go to a movie, sometimes there are messages that can be taken away and this can be a part of it. Sure. So like, I think to sum up, we can say they are, they are different, they are not less. Yes. So neurodiverse individuals have their potential that needs yes. to be reached uh, during their development as yes. children, yes. as well as when they enter Others. college and yes. in the workforce. Of course, yes. So we have spoken about so many pointers. Now I would like to ask what are the risk factors or challenges that are associated with a neurodivergent individual? One of the challenges is related to mental health uh, yes. issues. Yes. When they find this constant challenge of not able to do something or understand, they may feel left out or yes. go back. So they yes. may withdraw in within themselves. Sometimes it can come out as frustration. So that is external. They will show it outside. They are at a bit more higher risk of going into depression, having anxiety, it can affect their confidence or self-esteem. This is important for others around yeah. to understand yes. and support these uh, children. That is one of the challenges. Okay. Uh, to add on, I think the other challenge that they have is underemployment or no employment yes, at all. Yes. Um, because though their intelligence is good, uh, they might not even uh, pass your interview stage at an organization yeah. because simply because they can't be social or they Agreed. can't articulate what they are thinking or they may uh, not do too well in the written entrance uh, tests that they have at organizations. Of course, yes. yes. So underemployment or no employment is, I think, again, one of the challenges that's present. Yeah. And to add on to that, I think even relationship uh, challenges yeah. are something that they have to face. So we have, see when we are talking about social interaction, it is inter and intra also. So they might have problem or challenges in addressing their family members or how they might take them up. Uh, challenge in making friends, peer relationship can get affected. So what's happening is we are asking people to be sensitive. We are asking people to be sensitive to others. But what we see is people are becoming sensitive to themselves. So that gap has to be filled. And when these are addressed, not just a neurodivergent individual, even a, a neurotypical individual will benefit from that. Yeah. So you're trying to say, let us make it 
a normal yes. thing let us put out our feelings yeah. to each other yes. so everybody understands yeah. they go through similar things so it is normal to go through it we don't need to hide it and exactly. suffer inside and be sensitive to others not to oneself so you be sensitive for another person not for yourself you know that's all yeah what are some of the myths that are surrounding neurodiverse individuals one of the thing is they don't have emotions does this mean you can say anything to them whatever you feel like okay also does it mean that they don't want friends they like to be left alone so you don't interact with them because you feel or you assume that they like to be alone do you think they procrastinate a lot do you think it is deliberate okay and do you think that they are arrogant they are snobbish they don't want to interact they don't want to mingle they don't want to associate themselves with you what could it be do you think they don't have a family life they can't have a family life or uh-huh, but which but which family doesn't have problems and so, everyone has to adjust exactly so are these reality or are these what are the assumptions that we have made that is something to ponder upon yes now that we've understood the myths around neurodiverse individuals what does one do if you identify yourself as a neurodiverse okay. individual or your sibling or your child in the house imagine if you have any reading or eyesight issues you go to a eye doctor you get tested and based on what you require you get your glasses prescribed and you do it yes. similarly if you are facing challenges uh, by going through all this a lot of you think that you also have somewhere something some hmm. uh, challenges around all these but not everybody needs input or therapy yes. things become a challenge or an issue when they are affecting you in your daily life in some functioning in any form of functioning like we've discussed it could be in school with peers or workplace if you're struggling and this is affecting you you need to go seek professional help for children you can go see your pediatrician to get initial guidance or you can see a pediatric neurologist pediatric psychiatrist or a child development physician for older people you can see your family physician or uh a psychiatrist and they mm-hmm. can guide you once they see you talk to you they will understand what is happening and what assessment needs to be done and then formulate how we can help you but one thing remember this is not very easy like a blood test do it you get a result it yeah. is black and white yeah. sometimes we may need time to understand the whole process things may overlap to get a clearer picture we need to we may need time so be patient the yeah. and the therapy is also not a tablet or an injection where you do it and it is solved it is about evolving over time developing coping skills when you are directed uh, to the therapist go see them work with them and then you can actually see uh, good results it is very important in your children if you start seeing this to start then itself because at that root level where they are growing if the base is made strong resilient with coping skills as adults they can do much better okay so we are saying we have to identify the red flags yes and also come away with mental stigma i don't have the stigma of you know we should not ask it because it's a mental health issue and third understand that this is an individualized program yes each person is different so the therapy will be different and acceptance yeah very important like okay. i gave you the example of glasses before that was a stigma now it is not yes so exactly. let us do the same yes. here we've been speaking a lot about trying to include neurodiverse people what exactly do you mean by being inclusive okay inclusive is for everyone so it means to embrace all kinds of people 
so for me someone else might be different they have to be different so it is not just applicable to neurodiverse per person it is for everyone so you're embracing everyone for what they are or who they are there is no discrimination there is equal access equal opportunity given there is equal treatment you are treating another person as a human being accepting them with all their strengths weakness everything because when we meet a person we have a certain expectation from the other person and when that expectation is not met we label them sure. so why do you meet someone with an expectation be an open mind accept them as who they are so at that time all this labeling will be of no matter that is what is inclusiveness to just accept the other person as they are and a lot gets reflected in the tone that we speak of with course, the language yes. the words that we use a look a one look, look yeah. you know it's just a look but it carries a ton of message sure so we have so, to be sensitive in of course, our body yes. language around yes. people yes. the tone that we use the yes. words that we use yes yeah. our intolerance to certain things so right. when we manage all that inclusivity comes automatically Automatic. yes let us move to how we can help neurodiverse individuals within our home and our yeah. organization and yeah. in our teams what can a family do what can family members uh, and relatives do to yes. help uh, individuals with neurodiversity within our household we have looked into how the these people struggle so creating uh, spaces they may feel very overwhelmed when too many things are uh, expected for them to do okay sharing what can be done having a little breaks if it is getting too much it is okay just step out breathe for a minute come back and do it or if you just want to pace up and down for a minute it is okay you will feel yeah. more relaxed you can come back and focus again and go back to the task rather than sitting in one place wanting to finish it getting overwhelmed and not doing a good uh, job Okay. To add to that, I think they also need opportunities to practice social communication. Absolutely. Whether it is to communicate emotions, whether it is to communicate a, a difficulty or a problem or a conflict that they are undergoing, whether it is to communicate a request or asking for help, I think they need to have family members encourage these skills within the household, isn't it? Yeah. And for both of this to happen, there has to be acceptance in the family and the extended circle. because nothing will happen if there is no acceptance and the sure. inclusivity that we are talking has to be there it starts from the family right. so when that acceptance factor is there things do fall in place so we need to kind of create that atmosphere mm -hmm. so they feel okay they can open up yeah. they can share yeah and we can have a time a family time which we are losing out what we used to do before yeah. sit together yeah. and eat course, or just have yes. a time you yes. go out just you being without gadgets also yeah. yeah and talk about what is happening inside so the other person understands it is not just you or me mm. it happens to everyone and they will find that strength of course, from yes. each other yeah similarly everybody needs to have a self care rituals yeah. right everybody yeah. needs their me time yeah. uh, everybody needs to have um, something to help their physical strength their physical stamina some ritual or activity to take care of their mental health so self care rituals in place for all members within the household i think again will help them to cope with help will help each member of the family yes. cope and everything starts from the family the root is the family so how a child is made to feel at home is what is going to be reflected outside be it a child or an adult so how accepting they are at home how normal you know we label normal so much but mm -hmm. none of us are also normal so how normal they are treated at home is also a matter to be concerned about so they have to feel that acceptance yeah, yeah. so we looked at how at home we are supporting each other now moving on to the next step we are going out working uh, uh, peers employers yeah. how can these people support okay to be inclusive i think 
one of the first things that co-workers can do is to have distraction free workspaces mm-hmm. a lot of the conditions that we've spoken earlier require that the space around them to be clutter free uh, so that their mind and thoughts get a bit organized and therefore their work and productivity hmm. gets better yes moving on if they are struggling to work in a workspace give them the option of work from yeah. home when possible yeah, yeah. Yeah that makes sense and also if a, if an individual is very sensitive to sound you can have noise cancelling headphones you know yeah so we are stuck with earphones listening to music and i'm sure they will enjoy it if there's no noise so we can make that arrangement sure we also spoke that they are at risk for mental health difficulties yes. so maybe mental days mental days off mental health days off to be uh, mm-hmm. help them to cope with the stress yes. that they are feeling on similar lines they may not be okay with the certain time schedule patterns having a bit more flexibility mm-hmm. around when they can log in or log off when they can come in or off is a good option yes workshops can be conducted where the team members or all the employees employees can understand what is the latest approval what has to be done how can we be a bit more sensitive how what do we do to bridge a gap so it will be a two way program so all kinds all people will get together and they will try to you know understand what's going on in the other's plate right so these are some of the accommodations yes. that co-workers yes. can give but each individual needs to find their own coping mechanism course, or their yes. own accommodation within yes. the workspace yes. uh, to help them function smoothly and have better productivity isn't it yes so individualizing these plans is very important yeah, yeah. yeah. So throughout you have seen how three different individuals have been sitting together and giving one kind of a program we have used our strengths together we have helped each other out to get this outcome here she is good in planning organizing you see her with uh, notes i come up with ideas she is very innovative very creative that is why we could present this to you so let's work together togetherness is strength and variety is something which is very essential so when you meet different kinds of people you learn more about yourself so why are we not accepting towards that with that we leave you to ponder, ponder. yes <laughs> thank, thank you, you.